My name is Megan Thomas, and I'm a watchable wildlife biologist with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. Today, my colleague Ruth Betcher and I went out to check on the seabird colony out in Fort Wool, which is in Hampton Roads, Virginia. This is the colony that used to nest on South Island, but as of this year has begun nesting on uh, the neighboring island, Fort Wool, due to some construction that's happening at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. And we've got Ruth to talk to you a little bit more about what's going on there. So since the late, uh, early 1980s, seabirds have been nesting on South Island, which is one of the artificial islands that supports the Hampton Roads Bridge and Tunnel. And um, we've had common terns, skimmer terns, gullbill terns nesting out there. And uh, in 2000, we had the arrival of laughing gulls. Then about six years later, royal terns showed up. And it turned out that South Island actually became one of the largest, our largest seabird colony in the state. So that was quite impressive. <laughs> and then um, Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel expansion project was approved in 2017, which no longer made it viable for the birds to, to nest there. And so because of that project, um, the expansion project, South Island was going to turn into a huge construction zone and there was going to be no available nesting habitat for the birds anymore. So we um, looked at a lot of different um, potential variables as far as providing alternative habitat and one of them was actually Fort Wool and uh, removing a lot of the vegetation, the trees and what have you and uh, the open parade grounds could be turned into really suitable nesting habitat so that's what we did there and then we did have heard of other projects where they created habitat, floating habitat on barges we decided to, to give that a try and actually put more barges between uh, Fort Wool and South Island and you know it's all right there all together to come up with a, you know at least two acres of habitat for the birds if not more. In order to make this happen in a very short period of time we um, relied on and we had a lot of help from a variety of different groups the uh, Virginia um, bird conservation community really rallied for us to make this happen as did uh, the American Bird Conservancy, National Audubon, uh, Virginia Tech and their staff also helped considerably, considerably by providing technical guidance and what have you but um, we were really so pleased by just the public support that we received that, uh, that led to Governor Northam you know, coming up with a mandate to actually make it happen this year to provide habitat on, South, on uh, Fort Wool and on the barges and ultimately to look for a long-term so solution that would include b the building of a permanent island for the birds. So the main species nesting on Fort Wool is royal, the royal terns. Uh, we have several thousand pairs nesting out there and actually that site supports no over 90% of Virginia's breeding population. They nest in such you know, large numbers, uh, not always, they can be in smaller numbers as well. They lay one egg, typically, real close together. They can identify their own eggs, their own chicks, that's, that's pretty impressive. They're great indicator species of what's happening in the broader picture of our environment. And um, yeah, they're just special birds. And then we also have uh, probably a couple hundred pairs of sandwich terns and that and Fort Wool is the only site where sandwich terns are nesting in Virginia currently. We have several hundred pairs of laughing gulls. Um, a huge surprise to us this year was to have probably over 30 pairs of snowy egrets nesting on the island. Uh, several pairs of oyster catchers, several pairs of Canada geese, a handful of mallard ducks nesting, um, and then 40, 50, 60 pairs of herring gulls as well. So it is truly a bird magnet. The island is close to the public or public access. Um, and uh, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously to um, avoid disturbing the birds by people just walking through the colony. These eggs can be stepped on easily. The birds flush, you know, we just want to not even have that happen. Um, however, people can view the colony from a boat. We've just established a uh, no boat zone that if people 
remain out, outside of that zone, you still get a pretty good view of birds coming in and off of the barges and also Fort Wool. Another thing that I, I think needs to be pointed out is the fact that the Virginia Department of Transportation staff on the island and in the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel complex have done a phenomenal job managing the birds since they first arrived in the mid 80s. Uh, they have helped create uh, habitat on South Island, manage the habitat on South Island, uh, keep vehicles away from the birds uh, to avoid the threat of being run over. Um, so a lot of credit needs to be given to, the, to them for that. And then also during the, the transition period and providing support for um, creating this alternative habitat and then ultimately coming up with a long-term solution of a bird island. It makes me feel like anything is possible because we literally had a little over three months to make it happen from the time that Governor Northam made his announcement to when, you know, the birds arrived and, you know, laid their first eggs. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty phenomenal. And, uh, you know, so much credit goes out to, can go out to so many different people and groups. Um, so we're very thankful. This project has seen tremendous amounts of success within the last year. Just as a reminder, this is our largest seabird colony in Virginia. We've got over 90% of our nesting royal terns using this island every single year. Uh, so the fact that we were able to pull this off in such a short amount of time is an absolute milestone in conservation. The Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources is the lead agency charged with conserving and protecting Virginia's wildlife and the habitats that they so critically depend on. One of the major ways that we at DWR strive to maintain and restore quality habitat for wildlife is through our Restore the Wild initiative, which supports critical habitat restoration and mitigation efforts, just like the accomplishments we've had here at Hampton Roads. The best way to support habitat conservation and restoration for projects just like this one is by purchasing a Restore the Wild membership, which can be done online or over the phone. This membership comes with a lot of great perks, but most importantly, it helps us fund our ongoing restoration projects, which directly benefit our native wildlife. So if you're looking to learn more about this project or some of the other habitat conservation work that we're doing here at Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources, consider following us on social media or even subscribing to our Notes from the Field blog that goes out monthly.